Good evening everybody and welcome to the video. Uh, I, you guys really liked my last video essentially talking and discussing about interview common interview questions about a particular AWS service right. This video I want to talk about DynamoDB. Remember you don't want to memorize textbook definition and answer just be natural in the interview. So let's get started with this uh, okay. So the first question is what is DynamoDB? Well, DynamoDB is a NoSQL database, right, which can hold a key and a value or a document essentially. That is exactly what you want to say. Don't um, memorize big definitions and try to be fancy. Just explain things what you, in a very easy way, right? The next question would be essentially, okay, what is a composite key in DynamoDB? So you want to say a composite key in DynamoDB consists of a partition and a sort key. Together, they act as a composite key. What is a sort key or what is a range key in Dynamo and why would you want a range key? In DynamoDB, um, range key or the sort key will essentially allow you to filter items. That's what you want to say, right? Now, the next question would be, okay, could you tell me something about what is a WCU and what is an RCU? So you want to say WCU stands for write capacity unit and RCU stands for read capacity unit. So whenever you read data, let's say you read uh, let's say you read about 10 kilobytes of data. Uh, Amazon will consume about three RCUs uh, or two RCUs for, for that. Essentially, Amazon builds you based on RCUs and WCUs. That is your answer, right? Then the next thing they'll ask you, okay, well, could you store any amount of data in DynamoDB? What is, a, uh, is there a limit on Dynamo row? You want to answer, yes, there is. A single row, row size cannot exceed more than 400 kilobytes. Uh, that is your answer, right? So the next obvious question he's gonna ask you is, okay, what if you have a data or a row that exceeds more than 400 kilobytes? You wanna answer, uh, well, there are a couple of ways. Uh, the first approach that I can think of is we can serialize down the object. Uh, so if we, if, we, if we have an object, we'll serialize that as a string. If still it is too large, then we are gonna save those objects on S3 and have the key or the path of the S3 in the Dynamo table. That is your answer, right? Then again, uh, the, the next questions would be essentially, um, well, what is PITR in DynamoDB? Could you explain? PITR stands for point in time recovery, which will help you essentially in scenarios where your data is accidentally deleted or if you wanna recover from a previous backup. Uh, PITR point in time recovery essentially allows you to uh, restore your data. Okay, now the question becomes even more interesting. Now uh, they might ask you, okay, well, what is a GSI in Dynamo? Would you be able to explain me? Well, in DynamoDB, GSI stands for Global Secondary Index, which essentially allows you to have a different partition and a sort key. Um, then they'll ask you, okay, how many GSI you can add on a table? By default, uh, you can add up to 20 GSI, but this limit could be easily extended by contacting Amazon Web Services. What is LSI? LSI stands for Local Secondary Index. This essentially allows you to have a different sort key on a DynamoDB table. By default, um, you can add up to five LSI, and if you want to add further, you may contact Amazon Web Services. That's your answer. Okay, so, so far you're doing good. Now, again, the question is, uh, so we are, exp uh, you know, DynamoDB table is growing and um, the cost is pretty, it's pretty expensive. How would you optimize your DynamoDB table? Well, there are a couple of approaches I can think of. The first obvious approach is uh, there's a new, there's, a, there's an amazing feature with a simple toggle button. That is, I can ch change the data to infrequent access. This will allow me to essentially save 60% on my DynamoDB cost easily, right? Then the second option is basically maintain operational data on DynamoDB by essentially keeping either one or two years of operational data. How do we essentially archive the data? Then that would be the next question. The answer is there are a couple of ways in which we can archive. The, the best industry standard recommended way is to have a TTL field on DynamoDB, set up DynamoDB stream so as soon as a dev, item is deleted through TTL, they would essentially be captured by streams and through that streams now you have your fire hose and you use a lambda transformation to transform Dynamo JSON to a regular JSON. That is your answer. Uh, further, we, if you want to optimize cost, we can also go for eventual consistency instead of strong consistency. Uh, again, they might ask you questions on what is eventual consistency, what is strong consistency. Uh, as far as I remember, again, not I, I don't remember exactly, but eventual consistency will read data from, I guess, at least one copy. Strong consistency read data from at least two copies. And 
essentially ensures that you always read the latest updated um, data from Dynamo. Okay, what is DynamoDB global tables? DynamoDB global tables means you can have the DynamoDB tables in different region, US East 1, US West 1, etc, etc. So if your application requires highly, if your application needs your database to be highly available, you might opt for essentially global tables in DynamoDB. So that's that. Um, what else they can ask you, right? Then the next questions are basically, I think this covers pretty much a lot of questions on DynamoDB at this point. Uh, let me think I'll really quick about anything else that I can think of. They might ask you data modeling exercises on DynamoDB. They will ask you maybe model one to one or one to many. Uh, data modeling is a pretty common exercise that you might expect in DynamoDB. So please understand and know all the things in detail, right? Uh, what is DynamoDB streams? They might ask. So you want to say streams essentially allows you to stream uh, events from DynamoDB such as insert, update, delete and essentially either power downstream user or basically archive the data. Uh, so that is essentially about streams, right? If you want to aggregate the data or if you want to do certain action on the data, you should essentially do that through DynamoDB streams. Okay, so far so good. Everything is good. Um, now they'll say, how would you export data from uh, Dynamo? There's a simple feature which says export to S3. I can simply click on a button and export Dynamo JSON to S3. And similarly, I can import data from Dynamo JSON to DynamoDB tables easily with a simple button. If that doesn't work, uh, there's an option we can run a glue crawler, identify the schema, run a glue, glue job that will essentially take the data from DynamoDB and upload uh, and put it on S3. Then you can essentially run Athena, um, you know. Uh, add our queries on DynamoDB, uh, S3, sorry, add our queries on S3, right? Uh, so yeah, these are some of the questions I can think of. Again, the data modeling access can be expected if you mention DynamoDB in your resume. Anything else I can think of? Uh, let me think quickly. Backups I have covered, streams, basic questions, you know, data types, GSI, LSI. I think these are all the possible questions uh, that you might expect on DynamoDB. And if you really loving all these videos, please make sure to give a like and subscribe to my channel. And please share this video to people whom you think this will benefit. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. With that being said, keep smiling, keep programming, and I'll see you next time.